Hey guys, I'm Rhonda Draculis, and I am teaming up with my two best creative buddies. So stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, so the first layer or step in the design process is to actually draw with a pencil the geodes that we want, the shapes that we want to start with. Now the thing about doing the shapes is you're either gonna want one person to do all of the shapes, or if you use two people, you wanna stagger those shapes so that Eric is not doing one end of the table and I'm doing the other end of the table because you'll know our styles aren't gonna mesh because everybody has their own style. So what we're gonna do is we are going to intermingle our styles. Show. Sure. So she's gonna start one. I'm gonna kinda come over here and then we're gonna meet in the middle. Because this is a rather large piece, we're gonna do a little bit larger geode shapes than obviously if it was an art piece. Also, when you put them together, don't forget to round the, the pointed edges. And it doesn't have to be really distinct. It's just gotta be distinct enough for you to be able to see it when you get ready to go to the next step. All right, so we have the design on the table and we're ready to start adding our actual color design. So what we're gonna be using are alcohol inks. Now, we're not gonna be putting the alcohol inks directly into the resin. Therefore, we're not gonna really have to worry about an issue of fading. We're putting it on the substrate and it does matter the quality of the alcohol inks that you use. So Erica, why don't you talk a little bit about what alcohol inks that you kind of recommend mm -hmm. and um, maybe the colors that we're using. So the inks that I use are really pigmented. I use Zig, Copic, Blick, Ranger, and Pinata. Spectrum Noir and Pinata. We're also going to use some of the Color Obsession tints that are made for resin. So we're actually going to be using resin tints mixed with alcohol. So we'll kind of let you guys know as we start laying down the colors what are what so you can see how they react. Mm -hmm. right. So you wanted a teal blue palette. Of course. With browns. Of course. Shocker. So that's the colors that we pulled for the piece. Okay, so if you're having multiple people work on a large area, again, you're going to want to intermingle because everybody that does this, no matter how good they are, how long they've done it, they all have their own style. So you're gonna see Erica, Claire, and I kind of moving all over this board because we all have our own style. All right, let's go. So this is 91% alcohol, and I'm just using a craft brush. Use something that has synthetic fibers so that they'll end up splitting a little bit, and that'll give you variation in your lines. And those are usually a little bit like less They're expensive, cheaper. like cheap. This is cheap the brushes. fine touch. So you get this brush with like 42 others at Michael's for $7 probably. So I'm putting down some alcohol first to give my ink something to flow on top of so it doesn't just soak right into the uh, gloss spray paint. Don't That's worry okay. if things happen like that. It's alcohol ink and the brown's gonna be in a lot of areas. So we're just following the lines that we drew out yesterday. That's Espresso by Ranger. So when you do these round ones, there's no real good spot to end sometimes. So I always end up kind of turning the brush so it kind of comes down. So you don't have a hard line when you stop. You're just kind of feathering it in. Gotcha. Okay. So I'm just gonna bring these all the way in. And each time that you go into the circle, you're, you're making it lighter and lighter. You're fading out that color. Yeah, I'm just using the color that's yep. on the brush already. Yeah, that's pretty. And then you can add other colors too. What is this, brass? Brass? Mm -hmm. Oh, brass has a real metallic look. Yes. That's pretty. It is a metallic. So that's the one that we're using on the other one on the outside edge. I gotcha. So guys, we do a live on my Facebook channel every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central. 
and we actually did one of these geodes on a round uh, cradle board, and it turned out really cool. So check us out on Tuesday nights, 7 p.m. Okay, that looks way cool. So, alrighty. While that's setting up, you move on to the next one. Okay. I don't like this one that I just did at all, so we're going to fix it. And this is the fun thing about the alcohol eggs. All right, so we take a paper towel. Yeah, and put it at 91%. And you can just take it off. Mm -hmm. If you prep properly. All right, so when we talk about prepping correctly, it's very important that your final white coat be um, either, either, spray either a spray gesso or in this case, what we used was um, gloss white. white gloss spray paint from Rust-Oleum. And your, your surface has to be very, very smooth. Um, we did a lot of sanding in between coats. And our last sanding that we did before we sprayed our last coat of white spray paint was with 400 grit. Because you don't want a lot of roughness on your surface because then the alcohol is going to grab that roughness. So as smooth as you can get it, the better. Stage one or step one of the design process is done. So we've basically got all of the area filled in with some shape and color of a geode. So now what we're gonna do is start doing um, more fine tuning it and fine detail. So what I'm doing is I've got my mica powder. Uh, this is actually, what is this one? Aquamarine. Aquamarine from Resin, from Resin Art. Art. Okay, that's a product that Erica sells on her site. You could also do this with the mica powders that I sell on my site. And uh, what you'll want to do is mix it a little stronger than half a bag to eight ounces. You'll want to get it a little bit more concentrated so you have a little bit more color as you do the process of sprinkling, which I'm fixing to uh, show you. What Claire is doing, uh, what process or uh, product are you using? This is Malibu. It's uh, the rainbow and it's got super, super fine. It almost seems like a rainbow iridescent glitter into it. We're starting to make things realistic now. So we're dropping these little drops on here. And what that's going to do is you, as the as the creative process continues, building these layers and layers and layers of what we're doing are going to make it look realistic. So Claire is going to be doing the little drops from the bottle. I'm going to be doing little drops from the spritz and all I'm doing is putting it on my finger so that I can control it a little bit and I'm just sprinkling it and then as it dries the alcohol is pushing the alcohol that we already have down on the surface kind of pushing it apart and you're going to get this look right here. Now why do we go to the next step and spray this stuff on here? This stuff is called UV archival varnish very important you get it in mats. What this will do is give an extra layer of protection from any potential fading. And also it's a barrier between your inks and your resin because some colors may reactivate with the resin once it starts to cure and heat up and stuff, so. All right, so you said something very important in yes. there that they may not have caught. Matte. Yes. It has to be a matte finish 
Why does it have to be gloss matte? Gloss will reactivate your inks and make you very sad. All right. There's alcohol in the gloss. All right, so there's alcohol in this can if it is gloss. There is none in there if it's matte. So make sure you pick up the matte can. Okay, so let's get a spray. And also you want to be in a very well vented area. When you do this, we have a very good ventilation system, so we're okay, don't worry. We're, we're taking care of ourselves. Anyway. That's right. Okay, so here we go with phase two of the creative process. Everything's laid down, our sealer is dried, and now we're gonna start coming in and filling in these gaps with a gold pen, and I'm just using a gold marker pen. And now we're gonna start outlining each one Again, we're layering and layering and, and building uh, creative interest. Claire and I are gonna be doing the paint pen. Erica is going to be coming in with, what are you doing, Erica? Why do I have to pronounce it? So yeah. it's PBO or PABO or PABO. I don't know, it's French or Canadian or Canadian French. It's a Vitria 160 and it's an outliner for glass. But the reason why I like to use this one in particular is because the point is Super fine. It's an adhesive, right? Because what are we going to do well, with it? Well, it's pearl, so you can leave it just as it is. Oh. It's not just an adhesive. It's a decorative tool, but gotcha. I add a glitter on top of it. Let's say someone can't find this, all right? Could they use just an adhesive glue and come back and immediately put glitter on top? Sure. You can use essentially whatever you want. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. You could use puff paint for shirts. Oh, that's a good idea. Because those a lot of times are fine point like this. Cool. All right, here we go. I am so excited that Erica and uh, Clara have decided to join me on this project. I absolutely could not do it without them. I'm Erica, I'm with Artists Till Death, and we have a YouTube channel we post to every day. It's usually resin, but a lot of times it's alcohol ink, and so we super enjoy coming down to incorporate what we do with the amazing things that Rhonda does and Clara does. We also have a website, artisttilldeath.com, two T's, two L's with our products, some of which we used in this piece. I use so many of their products in our videos, in our kitchen installs, you name it. So when I say artist till death, that's who I'm talking about. Clara Lawrence. These are my people. I hang out with them to grow creatively wise. Clara is amazing when it comes to alcohol inks. Oh my gosh. So you need to go check out her YouTube channel, Claire Lawrence. We're gonna take um, some of the pearl and we're gonna Kind of tap it in a little tap bit. Yep, tap it in. And then we're coming in with the color obsession, and this is Winter Wonderland. Gorgeous, multiple sizes. And we're just gonna kind of fill in the middle. We're only gonna do this on a few pieces. Thanks. All right, so <laughs> let's finish up this countertop. Okay, so we're back. It's been two days actually since we sealed the top of the countertop. You don't have to wait two days. It just happens to be that we got busy and now we have time to finish the countertop. All right, so now what we're gonna do are the edges. So if you go look at a geode, an actual geode rock, the outside is kind of blah. It just looks like a rock. It's when you crack it open that you see the, the really pretty um, designs in the stones. So what I wanna do on my edge is I don't want my edge to be really uh, all colorful like the inside, but I don't want it to be blah either because it's gonna be the first thing that you see when you walk into our studio, you're gonna see that edge. So I wanna do kind of a in-between. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, we've already created a rock face edge. So the edge itself is already has some texture and it's got some movements, some highs and some lows. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this and really kind of do a faux finish on it and take it to the next level. 
Then we're gonna flood our countertop with the clear. Do a few little things on that and make this thing look wowza. All right, so for the first layer of the edges, I wanna create a solid color. And I want it to be a gold. I want a little bit of a metallic, but I don't want it to be a super bright gold. You can use two different products. I was actually gonna use this liquid gold uh, by Montana, I believe it is. Um, but I didn't have enough. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make shift. I'm gonna take the Krylon metallic gold. You can use any metallic gold. It doesn't have to be Krylon, but you, you know, obviously I want this to be a metallic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create paint like this from an aerosol. So I'm gonna come in. Now make sure you do this in a paper cup. If you do this in a plastic cup, or a styrofoam cup, this paint is gonna eat right through there and it's gonna make a mess. Make sure you wear a mask and you have a paper towel to cover this so you don't get all those fumes. Shake it up really well because metallics have to be shaken up quite a bit. All that falls to the bottom. All right, cover it up. Keep it covered for just a second and let all those fumes kind of die down. All right, liquid gold right there. Now you can use on this foam brush. This paint is eventually gonna eat up this foam brush. So this, I'm gonna chunk it. You can also use a uh, chip brush. I like the foam brush on a rock edge because I can really get into all the details. So that's why I'm gonna use a foam brush on here. But if you have a lot of area to do, realize that that paint can eat into these brushes. All right, so let's get started. Now you'll notice on the edge, everything is rough, even up kind of on the surface. You can't see it because we have a little bit of bleed from the alcohol. So what I wanna create is a definite line of where it looks like maybe the rock was cracked open. So. I'm gonna make sure that when I come in here, I'm creating an actual edge. Now, if you don't want it to be, if you want it to be kind of rugged, then just kind of take that brush. And I'm just following wherever the rock edge is rough on top, I'm just kind of following. Now, depending on what paint you decide to use is gonna determine if you have to put two coats or not. Another reason I like this brush is because I can kind of create an organic looking edge by kind of smashing it down. And I can get, really get up in to those crevices. Now this is a solvent based paint. So when we go to our next step, which is going to be a water based glaze, I don't have to worry about this layer of the paint coming off with the water based product that I'm gonna be using. So right here, it really goes up. You can't tell because there's already paint, but I wanna accent the fact that the rock edge goes up there. I really like that. Now you can also come back, say, say you don't like the way that that looks, come in here with your paper towel and then you can lightly touch it and tone that down just a little bit. It's better than just having a straight edge that's at 90 degree. It just, this is just given so much visual. And since this whole countertop is very visual and has so many elements, that's what's making it so unique is there's so many different elements in this countertop that it's gonna be a real showpiece. Now, right here, I've got two different color golds. I've got the gold that we used in the paint pen and I have this gold. So I'm just gonna kind of bleed those in just a little bit so I don't have such a hard, a hard distinct line. Make sure you get underneath. So I'll continue this to the very end. I'll let it dry for about probably 20, 30 minutes. And then we'll go to the next step, which is going to be applying our glaze. Okay, ready for the second step of the edges. So our gold paint is dried. Now it's time to come in with a glaze. There's a million glazes on the market. Um, 
You can use any kind of glaze that you want. Uh, I love General Finishes glazes. Uh, Van Dyke Brown is my very favorite. But this is all I could. This is all I had in the studio today. So it's the Rust-Oleum and it's the Java Brown. This is a really good glaze as well. Not quite as pigmented um, as the General Finishes, but this is good as well. All right. So what I did is I put a little bit of that in a cup. And now I'm gonna add some, a little bit of bling. And you're gonna see, you're not gonna see a lot of this bling show through my glaze. But when the light hits it just right, you're gonna see it. Now that was gold dust. And all of these products are available on our website. This is red rock dust. And the reason I'm doing different you don't have to do this. I want to add different uh, glitters because I have different glitters in the actual uh, design on the surface. That was Red Rock. This is, wrong one. This is just resin. They're chocolate truffle. All right. So like I said, you're not gonna really see this glitter as it really stand out, it's just gonna catch that light just enough to give us a little bit of a bling. So I'm gonna stir it up. And like I said, you definitely don't see it in the cup, but once it gets thin on the edge and the light hits it just right, you'll be able to see it. All right, again, we're gonna come back with a sponge brush and we're gonna do basically the same thing that we just did. All right, so everything's dry. Like I said, this is a solvent-based paint. So the water-based glaze that we're fixing to put on here, when I go to manipulate and to rub, it's not gonna affect this base coat. All right, so we're coming in and I'm just putting a light coat on there and what I'm doing, not really that worried about getting it everywhere. I really just want to get it down in to the, the lows. There's lows and highs on this. Now also what this glaze is going to do, it's going to knock down that sheen on the spray paint gold so that that sheen's not going to be in your face bright gold, which is what I'm going for. I want to dull it down just a little bit. I'll be honest, a shop towel, the little blue shop towels work a little better than, than these paper towels, but this is fine. I'm not going to really take a whole lot off. So I'm just tapping. Now you can see how by tapping, all of that glaze is staying in the low areas. And that's what's given this edge our depth. You can pull as much off as you want. If you want to pull a, a lot of material off so that you really see that gold, then you just kind of pat it. So now you see how you can really see that background. I mean, the foreground, the gold, I guess you would call it. Here, I have it a little thicker. I can pull that off a little more if I want. Make sure you keep changing your paper towel so that you have a dry area. So as you pull off, you're creating dimensions. Some areas I'll want to pull off a little more than other areas to give it a realistic look. Now, depending on what glaze you use, this glaze is not as pigmented as the glazes I usually use. So I'm going to let this set just a little bit. I don't immediately wipe it on and then wipe it back off. If you've got a really heavy, heavily pigmented glaze, you'll be able to wipe it on and immediately wipe it straight back off. All right, so we'll do this to the entire piece. Come back and see what we think. All right, so it's starting to dry. And after looking at it, I've kind of decided I don't want that much gold to show through. I want it to be a little more muted. So I'm just gonna come back and add. I want it, I want it to be a little darker. I don't want that gold to jump out at me quite so much. So I'm just gonna come back and add a little bit more of the glaze. All right, and this time when I pull it off, I'm just gonna pull it off a little bit. Yeah, I like that better. I really wanted it to be a little darker. And again, it's all gonna depend 
on your preference, what metallic paint you used first, how, how vivid that paint was, and how much you want your edge to be a statement. All right, I like that much better. And you can see just when that light hits it just right, it picks up a little bit of that glitter. That's exactly what I wanted. I didn't want it boom in my face. I just wanted ever so often for you to see a little bit of a glitter catch your eye. Okay, you'll notice right here in some of the smoother spots of the rock edge that I'm really gonna tap it up quite a bit because that's gonna actually make it look like it's a texture. So I can give a visual texture on those areas Okay, so the edge is done, and we're gonna let this dry overnight. Depending on what glaze that you use is gonna determine your dry time. If you use maybe a less expensive glaze uh, or a more watery glaze that's not as pigmented, you could probably get away with a few hours of letting that dry. If you come in with a very heavy bodied glaze, maybe a wall glaze, uh, that's meant to have a lot of open time, you may have to wait 24 to 36 hours, depending on, like I said, what glaze you use. It is very important that your glaze be 100% dry before you go to the next step, which is applying epoxy. So we're gonna let this dry. Tomorrow, we're gonna come back and we're gonna put a clear coat of epoxy. All right, so it's mixing day. We're gonna be using the Stone Coat Countertop Art Coat. The reason we're using the Art Coat is the Art Coat has the most UVA protection of just about any product on the market. Um, it's gonna react, we're gonna mix it, everything's gonna be the same as if it were the regular Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy, but because we have white in this countertop and a lot of really pretty vivid, vivid colors, I want those colors to stay true, so therefore I'm using the art coat. Now, I'm gonna get a lot of hate comments because I don't have a mask on. Stone Coat countertop products are zero VOCs. They're made with 100% solid materials. There are no solvents. So it is a very, very, very safe epoxy to use. Now, you being the adult watching this, you're responsible for your health, you're also responsible to do your own research. Research the product that you're using. Make sure, what does the MSDS sheets say? Are they solvents? Make sure you do your research, therefore, then you'll know what to do and what PPE that you need to wear. All right, so I'm gonna start with pouring B first. The reason I like to do B first is because B is not as dense, not as thick, less viscous than A. So I'm gonna get a little bit better um, accuracy when I measure. Now, you don't have to do that this way. You can start with A. I like to start with B, and I'll show you why. Now, part A is quite a bit thicker, more viscous. So as it as it comes out of the bottle and hits part B, it's gonna fall to the bottom quicker. You see how it's going straight down to the bottom? So it's not gonna take as long to mix, therefore, when I start measuring and look at my measurements, I'm gonna get a more accurate reading. If you pour part A in first, Part B tends to sit on part A a little while before it starts to kind of fall down into part A. And you get a little bit different reading that way. Like I said, if you do the other way, that's absolutely fine. And again, make sure you read your product's instructions before you start. So as I'm mixing, ever so often I'm gonna come in with a paint stick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape my edges and bring that material 
that's on the edge of my bucket that's not fully mixed into the rest of the product and then I'm gonna hand stir it. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna ensure that all the product in my bucket is mixed up. I'll do this a couple of times. Once again, I'm gonna scrape my edges. Hand mix. And that's gonna ensure that that material is mixed up. Now, the way that you can determine if you're mixing up properly is once you pour this out of the bucket, you're gonna take that bucket and you're gonna turn it upside down and you're gonna leave it a couple of days. And then what's gonna happen is all of the epoxy is gonna dry and it's gonna just pop right out and you're gonna have a very clean bucket. Now, what happens if you don't mix properly or enough or long enough and you try to pull that piece out, you're gonna have sticky spots inside of your bucket. And that's gonna be a key that you're not mixing long enough or thoroughly or scraping your edges and that's what can cause sticky spots on your surface. So that's a pro tip. Make sure you take that those edges and stir them up. All right, so we're gonna bling this up just a little bit. We're gonna add just a little bit of both the gold and the diamond dust. What this is is a very, very fine particle. It's, it's a smaller, finer, lighter particle than glitter. And I'm gonna put just a touch I don't want this to overpower my finish. So that was the gold dust. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the diamond dust. Tiny bit and put in there. Just spice it up just a little bit. All right, and like I said, I just want this to be a hint. You really, you're really not gonna see much of it until the light hits it just right. All right, let's go. All right, so once I've poured it out, I'm gonna scrape my edges, but I'm gonna make sure that that product goes in the product that's already on the table. I don't wanna scrape my bucket and then put it by itself because what will happen again, if I haven't properly mixed it, scraping that and putting it in a spot by itself could actually cause a sticky spot. So the fact that I'm emptying it out in the product, I'm gonna mix that one more time by hand. Everything's laid out. Uh, I've got all the surface tension out. That's another reason I like to use my hands because I can really get that product on the table. Now I'm gonna torch it. And again, you're gonna make sure you read the instructions for your product. Not all products are uh, able to be torched. Some products you use a denatured alcohol to come in and spritz your bubbles out. But this is stone coat and we can torch. I'll wait about two to three minutes and I'll torch again. I'll torch it three times. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes since we poured the clear coat. And because I don't walk away Rhonda, even though I tell everyone else to walk away, I'm gonna go to the next level with this and show you some really cool things to make this look even more 3D. So what I'm doing is I'm coming in with the gold, liquid gold, and I'll put a link to this for you guys down in the description. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just gonna come in here and because this gold likes to sit on the top, I'm gonna just outline and I'm not gonna stay exactly on the line. I'm gonna kinda go outside what's there now. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because it's gonna give me a little bit more of that 3D look. I mean, I'm almost trying to not be neat with this. For one, this is gonna continue to move a little bit, so my lines aren't gonna stay perfect. And I don't have to do this on every single one of them either by kind of picking and choosing which ones I wanna do, that within itself is gonna cause some really cool visuals. I'm not going crazy on it, I'm not putting a lot. 
Now, even on some of these that have a little bit more gold in there, I could even come in here and ever so often put a little bit of gold in there over the actual top of the geode, the top of the design. The more visual effects, the more layers that you can create, the more realistic this is gonna look. So here's the one that's actually got a lot of gold in it. So I'm just gonna come over the top with another layer of gold, intentionally kinda staying out of the lines. All right, that looks cool. I think I'm even gonna let a little bit of this gold run down the edge. As that epoxy moves over that edge, it'll take a little thin stream of that gold. Okay, so we finished doing the detail work with the liquid gold um, randomly, and it looks amazing. So we're gonna let this set overnight, and then tomorrow we'll come with our final flood coat. Then we'll let that set, and we'll do the ultimate top coat. So, getting excited, it's almost done. All right, so it's been right at 10 hours. The top is still a little bit tacky. It feels almost like uh, the backside of a piece of tape. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna put our final flood coat on at this stage. Usually, to do a flood coat, we'll wait 24 hours from the first pour. I don't wanna sand the top of this because where there's highs and there's glitter, I don't want to mess up that glitter. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pour while my top is still tacky. That way we're gonna get a chemical bond instead of a mechanical bond, which is what we get when we actually sand. All right, so that'll be our final flood coat. We'll wait then 24 hours. We'll come back with the ultimate top coat. All right, so our final flood coat is just the clear epoxy, three ounces per square foot, and we'll apply it just like we did our last coat. 24 hours after we poured the flood coat, we applied the ultimate top coat in a glossy sheen. Check out our YouTube video, The New Ultimate Top Coat, for some detailed instructions and tips on getting a flawless finish. After we roll on the UTC, we like to give at least 24 hour dry time. After that, we recommend one to two days before installation and full use. All right guys, as you can see, all right guys, as you can see, our countertop is finished and I am in love with it. Guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, we will post the products and the links that we used on this countertop. Check out our website, rk3designs.com for promotionals, information on our classes, and more. Sign up for our newsletter and you'll receive even more special coupons, and promo codes. All right, guys, until next time, remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.